China has always had protests of one kind or another. Uh, keep in mind that each time you have a protest, it's usually on the back of um, the government suppressing protests. So they, they accumulate over a period of time, like, you know, sort of uh, waves in a, in a volcano. Yeah, I, I think this is probably as big as it gets. And, you know, it's a reminder to the Chinese Communist Party which is really one by, run by a handful of people, that you have to please the, the other 1.4 billion people in China. I mean, that's the deal there. The people will give the government the power to give them the authority to do what they want to do, as long as the people are taken care of. Now, quite clearly, uh, COVID's gone down the wrong, uh, the wrong t tubes in that part of the world. They're using the old-fashioned way. That is, they're using uh, isolation and things like that. And... Uh, putting a lot of people off and apparently there was a recent fire people couldn't get out because of the covid restrictions so you know when it starts to get stupid the, the people sort of wake up and uh, I remind the government uh, that uh, they're only there because the people allow them there so people power is very very important i understand that some of the uh, techniques that the uh, the crowds are using are the same ones that were used in hong kong and have spread to places like moscow that white paper that piece of white paper suggesting that uh, don't leave any marks behind as you protest the government. And some of the, the slogans being uh, yelled out, you know, including uh, bringing down uh, Xi, Xi Jinping, uh, some of them are quite vulgar, actually, and mm. suggesting that the ordinary people are involved in this. So I, I think um, uh, watching China, Chinese politics and people and Taiwan and the U.S.-China relations right now, it, it was worth anybody's time because that's really where all the action is. Because oh. if it comes, it's going to come in these areas, and it's going to come pretty soon.